duck hunting. I have never, ever attempted to do what I'm about to do. And that is film a video in my car while I'm driving. So I'm going to be safe about this. Keep my eyes on the road the vast majority of the time. So I don't want to do anything dangerous. But I've been wanting to make this video about the worst atrocities, the worst sins that you can do as a waterfowl hunter. So the top five sins of waterfowl hunting. Now, I am a co-host of the Duck Gun Podcast with Jordan Fromer from uh, Duck Gun Chronicles. And we have a Facebook page called Fellowship of the Duck Gun. Over there, I put up a poll to a vote. What do you think the five worst sins of waterfowl or duck hunting are? And at the end of this video, hang on, I'm going to show you what the community thought were the worst five sins. Also, I'd love your input on this. What are the worst five sins? Before we get that going on, guys, hey, I got a ton of people that watch these videos that don't subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. That is the number one way that you can support what I'm doing here. This is season number six of trying to show you the entire hunting life of me and Fumbles, the guys that I hunt with, from the very first hunt and teal season to the very last hunt at the end of goose season in February. I'm just showing you what we do and how it works. So please hit that subscribe button. It really helped me out. If you are an avid freelance duck hunting viewer and you want to get extra content, you can do that at, at patreon.com slash freelance duck hunting. And, and I put over a bunch of extra. I've been putting over con extra content over there the last three or four years. There is a ton of extra content. Also, um, that is the Patreon page for the Duck Hunt Podcast as well. And if you sign up for that right now, you can also get a Freelance Hunt Stats membership as well as a two-for-one. So go check those things out. All right, so let's jump right into this. I'm going to go from five to one, and I'm going to give you a, just a brief thought uh, of why I selected these as the worst sins. All right, so number five, I believe, is coming into the marsh from anywhere from a half an hour before shooting time to a half an hour or 45 minutes after shooting time. There is just, it sucks when you have gotten there early, you have done all your work in the dark, you're all ready to go, and here comes someone right into the marsh, right at that prime shooting time, and ducks are flying, you're trying to call at them, but they're flaring because they're boating around or walking around. Now this one is a little bit the size dependent on the marsh. There are some marshes that are so big it doesn't matter, but there are some smaller ones that it just ruins it, man. The first 30 minutes sometimes can be the best part of the day. Don't walk in late. If you're late, wait. Wait till at least an hour after, then get your butt in there. Just that's selfish. It ruins it for everybody else. Don't do it. Number four, giving the specific name of where you're hunting on social media. Public land is precious. Do not be a scouter for people you don't know. It's hard to find spots. It's hard to scout spots. It's hard to know about spots. Make people do their own work. Make them do their own work. Make them find these spots. Make them get out there. I can tell you one of the pla main places that we hunt, especially early season, it's a small place. And it, you know, it can't, it cannot handle a lot of pressure. So Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, keep the name of these places you're hunting quiet, please. Um, it just makes it rough for everybody when you're directing traffic that way. Number three is setting up too close on public land. Um, guys, 200, I would say, 250 yards about should be the rule. In fact, Kansas a while back was going to actually make it a law that you could not set up within 200 yards of another party. Now, it didn't go through, but that's kind of the standard. Shotguns can, can fling pellet a long ways. It is really, 
really, really difficult to get yourself hidden enough to get mallards to finish, actually finish down in the decoys. When you're setting up 100 yards away, 150 yards away, you are again being selfish. You're setting up too close and you're gonna, you're gonna take the opportunity of stealing other people's birds or um, spraying them with shot. Please guys, keep the distance at at least 250 yards. It, it's just you and and here, here's the here's how here's what I think happens I think that guys are going to a spot they get in there they walk in there and they're like oh crap man what are we gonna do we're all the way in here now what are we gonna do so they just set up you have to be disciplined enough that if you don't make it in there in time and if you get into a spot and there is not room for you to set up, sorry, you just walk back out. This happened to us a couple years ago. We got clear into a spot in the morning. There's no place to set up. We just had to walk back out. I know it sucks, but you just cannot allow yourself to set up too close to other people. Now, sometimes it's hard to, to judge distance in the dark. It's hard. So what I do when I see a light and it's that close, I just walk over to them have a conversation. Hey, um, you know, I see you guys are here first. This is where we're planning on setting up. Do you feel like this is too close? I feel like it's about this distance or, you know, and I've never actually done this, but I know a lot of guys, people do it. Can we, if there's only a couple guys, we think about hunting together. You just cannot allow yourself to set up too close to other people. Just can't do it. All right, on to number two, sky busting and improper shot selection. Um, sky busting is, the reason that sky busting is so bad and that improper shot selection is so bad is that it increases the rate of crippled birds. When you shoot outside of your lethal range or out, outside of your personal skill range or outside of your choke and shot um, lethality range you're wounding a lot more birds now I think that one thing is that people don't understand about wounded birds is a lot of times you wound a bird and you can't even tell or maybe you're like oh it looked like I may have hit that um, studies have been done and about in duck hunting about 25% of all birds that take shot are not harvested that is a number that's way too high way too high and we've got to get down you've got to get those birds in tight guys and that means that means being willing to say okay that's too far i'm not going to pull the trigger another thing is shot number three if you've got three shots in your shotgun which most of us do you don't always have to shoot one the third shot a lot of times your third shot especially if you miss the first two is going to be a little too far it's a bird flailing away and all you're going to do is is put shot into those birds and never retrieve them. So make sure that you are really focused on your shot selection and that you're not shooting them too far. And also you're educating birds and you're disturbing the hunt of other people in the marsh. You know, if birds are at 55 yards and they're still working around in a marsh, maybe, maybe some other guy's gonna land them. Maybe you'll land them after a couple passes. Just be careful with your shot selection, no sky busting. All right, number one, the number one, I believe, waterfowl sin is leaving your garbage in the marsh. I cannot tell you. I have come up upon a place where people have hunted, and there are cans, and there are donut wrappers, and shotgun shells everywhere. Guys, pick up after yourself. My gosh, it's not that hard. You have all probably rolled up into a marsh and seen a bunch of trash. It doesn't leave a very inviting atmosphere. So for crying out loud, pick up your stuff, man. Pick up your stuff. So there you go. There, my, There's what I believe to be the five worst sins of waterfowl hunting. Now, um, in a second, I'm going to show you what everyone else thought it was over at Fellowship of the Duck Guns. But don't forget, hit that subscribe button and patreon.com slash freelance duck hunting for your dual account patreon and freelance on stats all right so here you go i'm showing you right now 
here's the image of what other people over there at the at the collective at Fellowship of the Dung Guns thought were the top five sins. Now it's your turn. If you disagree with my list, or if you have uh, your own thoughts about what you think the top five should be, put them in the comments section. I'm curious to hear them. Uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. Wait for more hunt soon. Right now you are seeing the playlist from this season, season six. You are seeing the playlist from season five. Playlist from season three. Get in there and binge watch some of these waterfowl Thank you guys so much. I think I did a pretty good job of keeping my eyes on the road, keeping safe. I'll see you guys next time.